Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us on the program, This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. In 1990, driven by the need to find innovative treatments for her 40-year-old husband after his diagnosis of a brain tumor and the grim prognosis that followed, our guest on today's This Week in America, Julia Shopik, knew that she had to buy more time, and she did. After a great deal of research, Julia added her treatments to those of the doctors, and her husband survived for 15 years post-diagnosis and 12 years beyond the doctor's expectations. Julia was a highly successful public relations consultant with no intention of becoming a patient advocate. But that changed, first as an advocate for her husband and then for others. Julia Shopik is the best-selling author of the award-winning book Honest Medicine, Effective Time-Tested Inexpensive Treatments for Life-Threatening Diseases, through her writings and her blog, honestmedicine.com, Julia's goal is to empower patients to make the best health choices for themselves and their loved ones by teaching them about little-known but promising treatments their doctors may and may not know about. Julia's writings on health and medical topics have been featured in international publications. She's written guest columns for the American Medical Association, posted on high-traffic social media sites around the globe, Julia Shopek, author of the Amazon bestseller, Honest Medicine, Effective Time-Tested Inexpensive Treatments for Life-Threatening Diseases, now being translated into other languages. And she's back with us on This Week in America. Julia, welcome back to the program. Great to have you with us once again. Rick, you know I always love being on your show. I actually write to you and ask you if I can be on your show, which I don't do with very many people. So thank you. And for I write me. back and say, of course you can. There's so many things to talk about, <laughs> and you've helped so many people, literally hundreds of thousands of people. This is National Autoimmune Disease Awareness Month, and I'll start off by talking about that, and then we'll focus on a, a particular treatment that you have and uh, a new book you're working on. Over 15 million people suffer from autoimmune diseases. Talk a little bit about that and the tremendous toll it takes on the American economy. You know, it's uh, these figures are staggering, and uh, you're absolutely right. It's a hundred billion dollars in direct health care costs uh, to the American system. Fifty million Americans are afflicted, and seventy five percent of them are uh, are women. I'm reading, of course, from the AARDA's. Uh, statistics. That's the Association of uh, Autoimmune-Related Diseases. And by the way, Rick, those are old statistics. I mean, about three or four or five years old. And I keep looking for updated because it's getting worse. You know, with all of the uh, uh, of the impurities, I was going to say crap, in the air <laughs> and, <laughs> and in our foods, somehow autoimmune diseases are on the rise. Um, if your listeners would like a list of uh, autoimmune diseases that can be helped by this one treatment we're going to be uh, talking about today, just write to me at Julia at Honest Medicine. The list keeps going up. And, and you can get uh, all that information. It's an excellent website. I mentioned the award-winning blog. It's honestmedicine.com. Of course, you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. The book is Honest Medicine, Effective Time-Tested, Inexpensive Treatments for Life-Threatening Diseases, one of those treatments that you came up with, we're going to be talking about in the program today, LDN. Talk about that because this really, am I overstating by saying it's a miracle drug? I mean, it seems to work in so many cases. You know what? I would rather say that it's a drug that people for whom it works call a miracle. Okay, that's I'm, fair. I'm, that's fair. I, I, I'm laughing because I also wrote an article about how to separate the wheat from the chaff, the good, the good from the bad. And one thing to watch out for is when people say this is a miracle. Or the other way that they put it is works for all cancers or all autoimmune disease. Nothing works for all. Nothing is a miracle. But when it works for you, and it works for a huge percentage of people with autoimmune diseases, they feel like it's a miracle. Let's start by laying the groundwork as to actually how you discover this. I talked when, back in 1990 when your husband was diagnosed and you decided, okay, I'm not going to accept what the doctor is saying. We really, it, we didn't Google a lot of things at the time. How did you find LDN? Well, it's very interesting, and in previous shows, and I can, I can, we can link to them if your if your uh, listeners want to hear them. We talked about how uh, how I found other treatments for my husband and all of that, but uh, it was after he died 
that I realized that, you know, I had realized all along that the doctors were not interested in learning about the treatments I had found that made, that improved him, that made him better. I began trying to put together treatments that doctors won't know about that work for life-threatening diseases. Ironically, I had learned about low-dose naltrexone while my husband was sick, not in the very beginning, but in 2001, when he had a recurrence of his brain tumor, and uh, I, I'm not sure if you're, if you remember, I'm sure you remember because you always do, that his suture line wouldn't heal, yes. and I was looking for treatments. And one of the treatments that I found, not for his suture line, but to keep the cancer from coming back, was low dose naltrexone. A good friend of mine, Dennis Roth, called me and said, "You know, you've got to." talk to this gentleman, Dr. Bahari. And I began to do research on Dr. Bahari. And I found that indeed, he was a very innovative, very exceptional doctor. He had found the drug naltrexone, which is used for drug addicts. And it's a fascinating story, which we won't have time for. But he was working with drug addicts. And naltrexone was FDA approved for for drug addicts to stop the the person from getting from getting high when they took naltrexone. Long story short, it did work to keep doc, uh, to keep patients from getting high at 50 milligrams. It was FDA approved at 50 milligrams. But Dr. Bahari found that at 50 milligrams, the drug addicts were were going crazy. It was too high a dose. So he began to titrate it down because he found that it had an immune modulating effect. It boosted endorphin levels, and he, then he found that not only did it stop the progression at very low doses uh, for people with AIDS, but for many, many autoimmune diseases. The first people to use it were people who had multiple sclerosis, and those are the people I profile in my book, In Honest Medicine. And then he found that it worked for people with lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, uh, just on and on and on. And it began to be studied by prestigious institutions, you know, by uh, University of California, by Stanford, by, uh, by uh, Penn State. And uh, this became a, I call it a cause celebre. People all over the Internet be started to talk about it. And that's when I decided it was one of the treatments I wanted to write about because, boy, doctors don't know about about it. It's inexpensive. And it really, I, I call it the, uh, the low dose drug, off label drug that I believe could save health care. I mean, we just can't stand the spiraling costs. No. And you mentioned inexpensive. And I, as I'm reading your books and you're working on um, Newman, I, I, Newman, I've had a chance to, to look at a couple of chapters there. And of course, reading Honest Medicine, Inexpensive is good and bad news, isn't it? It's good news in that that's exactly what we want, but bad news in terms of getting big pharma on board with this and getting doctors on board to prescribe it more. Yeah. You know what? Absolutely. Um, for some, you know, I, I'm sure your listeners know, I know you know, Rick, that uh, big pharma does all of 90%, I see. Remember I told you never to say the word all, and here I was starting to do that. <laughs> but it's just about... <laughs> Just about all yes. of, of the uh, FDA testing is done by Big Pharma. In other words, they do the testing for the drugs they want to put on the market. And this is dangerous stuff because, you know, people like John Abramson have written books called one called Overdosed America, which tells this was years ago, which tells how pharma lies in, not all the time, but often lies in, in what it says about the drugs. It's, it's uh, you know, it's testing because they want to put them on the market. So do they want to put a drug that is so low cost, about a dollar a day or less? Do they really want to test it? And if they do, will they raise the price? And Dr. Bahari himself, Dr. Bernard Bahari, who invented low-dose naltrexone, and I use that word advisedly, he was about to sign a contract with a pharmaceutical company to produce LDN, low-dose naltrexone. And as his pen was out, ready to sign his name, he said, oh, how much will you be charging? And when he heard the amount, I believe it was several thousand a month, he said, no deal. 
So that's the bad news. The good news is that if you're your doctor and you know about it, and if your doctor is willing to prescribe it, it has to be made by uh, by compounding pharmacists, and I do have lists of those that do it well, and it is very inexpensive. And that's the good news and the bad news. If you if it's something that you think, okay, this may work for what I have, or a friend or a family member has. Get a hold of Julia. It's very simple, honestmedicine.com. Julia Shopik, our guest on the program. Past programs, and we've, we've done a number of shows, you can pick up on our YouTube channel by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and clicking on the, uh, the videos icon. You can listen to uh, iTunes, the, the programs we've done before, where we really go into detail in a lot of these specific areas. I mentioned you're working on a new book. Talk about that, because this is fascinating. These are people who have been helped by LDN, and had some initial reluctance on the part of their doctors to uh, to prescribe it. Oh, Rick, it was just horrible. And one of the reasons I'm writing a book totally about low dose naltrexone, and I did, you know, I did share some of the completed chapters. It's not the book is not completed, right. but the chapters I shared with you are. Um, the reason I'm I'm so uh, adamant or excited about getting the word out even further about low dose naltrexone is these poor people. In, in my book, in the new book about LDN, have waited, one person waited 50 years. His name is Lad Jellin, and he waited 50 years after being diagnosed with, with Crohn's disease before he finally could get low-dose naltrexone. It worked, and are you ready for this, Rick? Even after it worked, he was part of a clinical trial at Penn State, and it worked for him. He could not find doctors who would prescribe it, even though he was able to say, it worked for me, and here are the results. He was able to show them the results. They, you know what they said to him? You're going to love this, Rick. They said, well, we will prescribe the other drugs for you that hadn't worked before, by the way, no. but they would not prescribe LDN. He found somebody who would. So the people that are in this book in the next book I'm writing with, by the way, a co-author named Don Schwartz, who's a terrific writer uh, as well. And uh, most of these people did not find LDN for so many years. And the bad news is that with some diseases, like MS, for instance, if you don't find LDN early on, a lot of the things that have happened to you as a result of the disease and the drugs are not able to be reversed. You know, it will stop the progression, but it will not reverse it for some diseases. For others, like Darlene Nichols tells the story in the new book about how it helped her with both her two, her two autoimmune diseases, uh, lupus and myasthenia gravis. And in her case, even though it was 35 years after being diagnosed that she found it, that she found LDN, it did reverse the symptoms. So, um, you know, I guess I'm trying to get the word out there so that more people will find it earlier, because this is just sad when they go 25, 30, 40 years, 50 in the case well, of Well, yes, I'm reading the chapters. I'm thinking I, I'm angered. I, I'm sad that this had to happen and these people had to go through suffering. And you're basically saying a lot of patients suffer unnecessarily because of a lack of information. A lack of information, and this is very interesting, Rick, yes, a lack of information on their part. How many chapters in Honest Medicine, in my book, Honest Medicine, said they had subheadings that said, thank God for the Internet, you know? Exactly, exactly. Because they found it on their own in most cases, and in just about all cases. You know, rarely do the doctors recommend it. There are a few doctors who do. There's a doctor in California named Dr. Jill Cattell, and now there are many, many others who are starting to recommend it. But in most cases that I'm writing about, don't forget, these are longtime sufferers, a lot of them. Their doctors absolutely refuse. So they can be given part of what I do. I do do some consulting to teach patients how to convince their doctors to prescribe LDN. But I'm not going to kid you and say that every doctor will do it even when uh, given the correct information. You know, it, it's a sad thing. But getting better, we're getting more doctors who will.
Well, I would think it would because of the success of the book Honest Medicine, published in a number of different languages. When they hit over in Norway, I understand it was part of a, of a documentary there, and it's uh, it's doing quite well. And uh, you're working on the new book because of all the publicity and the people understanding this is really something I need to approach my doctor about. And you mentioned you do uh, some uh, tell seminars and, and that type of thing in, in consulting and in, in dealing with patient with the prospective patients and their families as how to go about approaching the doctor. You can get all this information at the website honestmedicine.com. Time is going by way too quickly. I want to go back and talk about Dr. Bahari for for a few minutes here because you talk talk to his, his widow uh, Jackie Bahari in the in the new book, the chapter that I saw. And it's amazing as he has, he's on the verge of something that could revolutionize medicine, how a number of these autoimmune diseases are treated. And he's considered by, by his peers as what a witch doctor, a joke, and the pharmaceutical companies. He really was out there by himself for years, wasn't he? He was. And, of course, and you know, Jackie Bahari beautifully wrote, oh, wasn't that a wonderful preface that she wrote? Yes. Yes. Um, you, you, I did give it to you to see. I, I, it was fantastic. She w- lived with him, of course, you know, during this, and he was literally called a joke. And in the end of her cha- of her preface, she says he's smiling down, <laughs> saying, "I told you so," <laughs> you know. But the thing is, now this is important: that Dr. Bahari is was, excuse me, he died in 2010, a very respected researcher, you know, in in many areas. He was a double board certified, Harvard educated, you know. So he got his uh, articles in all of the journals before he started to write about LDN for autoimmune diseases. And Jackie told me something that I didn't realize. At first, when he was just using LDN for HIV AIDS because AZT was becoming known as being harmful, he did get some of his uh, articles published in, say, The Lancet. But when he started talking about LDN for other autoimmune for other, for autoimmune diseases, zip nada, nothing, and uh, he was puzzled. Uh, Bert Berkson, who is one of the heroes of my book Honest Medicine, says he had a conversation with Dr. Bahari, and he says Dr. Bahari, at least when he spoke with him, with Bert, with Dr. Berkson, said he was puzzled. You know, why aren't my articles being published? I was always published. And Dr. Berkson said, told him, you know why, you know, yes, because you're talking about something controversial, something that that the pharmaceutical companies don't want to hear about. Well, it's been amazingly successful in a number of cases. The book we're talking about is very simple, Honest Medicine, Effective Time-Tested, Inexpensive Treatments for Life-Threatening Diseases. You can find it, of course, at uh, Google, BarnesandNoble.com, wherever books are sold, all around the world, actually, at this point. Link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, a lot of great information at the website. Julia is very easy to get in contact with if you have any questions. She's basically devoted her life to to getting the word out there and to helping people. And I mentioned in the beginning what hundreds of thousands of people have uh, have been helped by getting the information on LDN. When do you think the new book will be out? We're hoping for it to be out in, in about six months. Actually, I'm looking for funding uh, to uh, get the book. And you know what? A lot of people out there do want LDN to be out there, but I'm looking for funding. It's quite expensive to publish a book. I want to publish it myself. The reason being, I do not want a publishing company to change. You know, so they, they yes. often ask yes. you to do. And I want to publish it myself. I want to have a beautiful cover, just like Honest Medicine did. And uh, so uh, I would say six months. And, uh, oh, the one of the things we're doing, and I, wa- I do want to say it, is that we are getting articles, we are getting success stories from people around the world, and that's not easy. I have to hire a translator, an interpreter, you know. Oh, exactly, yes. But, uh, you know, these stories from Norway, from Netherlands, from France, it's, it's Italy. It's wonderful, and the book is being published in a lot of these countries. It's just, it's just terrific. So um, that's well, where we're at. A lot at. of exciting things happening, and we will have Julia back in the program. So much more to, uh, to talk about. It is always a book that we get tremendous response, and you're able to help a lot of people. The book, again, is Honest Medicine, Effective Time-Tested, Inexpensive Treatments for Life-Threatening Diseases. 
Julia's website is honestmedicine.com. Julia Schopick, and that's S-C-H-O-P-I-C-K. Julia, it is always a pleasure. Look forward to having you back on the program, and thank you once again for, uh, for being with us on the show. Thank you so much, Rick. Always a pleasure. Julia Schopick, our guest on the program. The book is called Honest Medicine. Our website is honestmedicine.com. And we're back after these messages.